We're in the Indonesian island paradise of Bali. Its captivating beaches attract tourists from around the world. But the boom in holidaymakers is bringing environmental problems. Land and water resources are becoming scarce. The paradise is in peril. Bali is increasingly battling traffic and waste disposal problems. Environmental protectionists are demanding gentle tourism that conserves resources. Here on the Bukit Peninsula, on the southern tip of Bali, a resort has been built that intends to set a good example. The Alila Villas Uluwatu. At first glance, it's just another five-star resort of the kind the island has more than enough of. But this luxury complex follows strict sustainability criteria and focuses first and foremost on energy and water conservation. It was planned by Woha, a Singapore-based architectural firm that's won awards around the world for its green hotel architecture. Richard Hassel is one of the founders of Woha and responsible for the project. I think previously the luxury brands uh, were not interested in, in sustainability because they felt their, their customers were not interested in sustainability. But increasingly I think it's becoming clear that uh, uh, there are many people who, uh, who would visit a luxury resort who are very concerned about sustainability. The master plan follows a sophisticated climate concept. The villas are spacious. Open walkways link the individual rooms. There are large sliding doors on the outside walls. They border directly on the villa's pool. That produces a natural cooling effect. So the approach to energy was basically to see if we could just use less of it uh, in many ways. So making uh, the rooms really comfortable without air conditioning, designing for cross ventilation. So it's really about not creating any dead ends. So the air just can constantly move through the space and, and cool, cool the body. One special feature is the terraced roofs made from volcanic pumice from the neighboring island of Java. They provide natural insulation. As they're loosely piled up like this, it just creates a lot of air pockets which uh, keep the roof cool. And in the wet season, it's like a sponge, so it soaks up water. And we get a lot of local grasses and plants uh, sprouting in the stone. And um, so it looks quite different from the wet to the dry season, uh, which is something we like about it. Almost 60% of the employees come from the surrounding villages. This secures them a livelihood in an impoverished rural region, and the money remains in the country, another requirement of sustainable tourism. So who, can, who can name one of the key unique points of, of this hotel regarding what we've done from an environmental standpoint? In workshops, the resort's managers teach the staff about ecological awareness. They learn about water and energy conservation and waste disposal the biggest problem on Bali. The first being garbage. Plastic, bottle. Bottle, yeah, jadi tiga hal itu yang... The young employees are expected to explain the environmental concept to their villages. Some uh, of the team members are actually living and then helping with the garbage uh, separation as a family unit. So it's actually quite an interesting uh, collaboration between the people, the staff and the hotel because it's all interrelated. Now it's on to a very different climate zone, the Swiss Alps, another dream destination for many tourists. But how do you protect a fragile ecosystem like this from constant expansion of tourism structures? Architects and researchers have developed a spectacular pilot project. 
The Alpine shelter known as the Monte Rosa Hut is meant to be a model for climate-friendly building worldwide. The new shelter, which is reachable only on foot, is a lodge for mountaineers and hikers. The concept was devised by Swiss architect Andrea de Plaz in cooperation with ETH Zurich, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. Building at an altitude of 3,000 meters was a challenge. It was about leaving the smallest possible footprint, on the one hand because the building couldn't be put on a flat surface in this terrain, and on the other, we wanted to create a building that offered the largest amount of interior space with the smallest possible outer surface, and that's a more or less spherical or cylindrical building. The ground plan is octagonal. The outer walls run obliquely upwards. It doesn't look so much like a traditional mountain chalet as a UFO. The centerpiece is the peripherally ascending staircase and windows that spiral around the whole building. Climbing it gives you a panoramic view of the surrounding Valais Mountains, including the Matterhorn. The cascading staircase traps the heat. The sun shines directly into the stairwell. The air warms up and rises through the whole building, as the laws of physics dictate. The stairwell itself can be compared to a sort of pipe. It transports the warm air throughout the building through a very gentle system of ventilation. So we can use the heat of the sun to warm the whole building. The new energy-efficient shelter attracts mountain climbers and the curious. A night in a dormitory room costs 37 euros. There are warm showers in the hallway. Just building it was a major undertaking. At this altitude, all the structural elements had to be flown in by helicopter, the only climate-unfriendly element and an unavoidable one. The individual elements were prefabricated from local spruce according to computer models. They were then flown up from the valley and assembled on the mountain itself. Because of the permafrost, the Monte Rosa hut stands on stainless steel foundations. Construction cost four and a half million euros. The hut has been open for visitors since March 2010. An aluminum shell protects the high-tech building from frost and moisture. The aluminum shell ensures that the building has quite a thick skin, so we don't have the problem of water seeping in. It's weather protection in the first place, and of course it also keeps what's inside from getting out. The interior heat and humidity can't condense on the structure's facade. In Rwanda, in contrast, this vision is still in the process of becoming reality. A hotel with a congress center and IT park aimed especially at attracting business travelers to the country. The new complex is in the heart of the capital, Kigali. The small country is pursuing an ambitious vision. It wants to put its dark past behind it and is looking resolutely to the future. Kigali plans to become the economic hub of East Africa. Its master plan for 2020 promises a modern, sustainable city. Singapore and Dubai are its role models. Building on the large-scale project has begun under the direction of German architect Roland Dieterle. His sustainable concept won the Rwandan government's approval. The building contractor comes from China. It's an international team. Uh, going up uh, with the inclination of the, of the spiral of the ramp. The prestige project is expected to cost 300 million dollars. 
Completion is planned for 2014. It's especially important for this country to be able to say we can do this. We're not just a third world country. We can show the world that we can tackle major projects and are creating a business climate that will attract other investors and stimulate the economy. With 300 rooms, the new five-star hotel will be the best in Rwanda. Energy efficiency is of the utmost importance here. All the facades and interior rooms will be shaded from the sun. The connecting walkways will remain largely open to create natural cross-ventilation. Rwanda's moderate climate makes this possible. In the inner courtyard, Lodges with greenery will contribute to cooling the building. An official from the tourism ministry visits the site. Rwanda has passed stringent environmental regulations and is pinning its hope on ecotourism. The country is promoting the project around the world and has engaged a large number of foreign consultants. It's not just development that we want. We want those who are coming with sustainable development, uh, with the expertise, and ensuring that uh, we can attract the right people, which we've already been doing, but we need more investors. The Kigali Convention Center, a Congress center for 2,600 people, will be right next to the hotel. Its dome-shaped event hall will be covered by a delicate spiral steel structure. This is where the future landmark will stand. Like the entire complex, it'll be built for energy efficiency. The dome has a large air volume, and we make use of that. We basically use the dome as a solar chimney. It warms up at the top, speeding up the effect of convection, so that for the most part, we have natural air conditioning for some of our operations here. The German architect traveled the entire country, even visiting remote villages to get inspiration from Rwandan traditions. The old royal palace, with its traditional round buildings, is the model for the dome in Kigali. This is how Ditele wants to carry over Rwanda's architectural heritage into the modern day. He also drew inspiration from the country's traditional wicker work. This is very typical of the design principles that we've found in a large number of other places as well. It's the combination of very strong austere geometry, both in contrast to and in conjunction with haphazard structures. We've applied it again in other ways, in flooring and wall coverings. The colors of the dome project reflect Rwanda's diverse landscape. The German architectural firm carried out an extensive analysis of colors and materials all over the country. Vivid hues are being used for the facades of the IT park. They will contrast with the earthy mineral tones of the dome. We visit a granite factory south of Kigali. Roland Dietele orders material for the facades and flooring. The factory has just opened. Until now, Rwanda has had to import the stone from abroad at high prices. That's now changed. Dietele wants to use only domestic materials and boost the Rwandan economy. That also satisfies the factory's managers. So having this factor here is, uh, is our diamond, it's, it's, it's very important. We, we, we create uh, jobs and we, you know, we are, we are 
exploiting and we are doing good business with the community. Rwanda's economic recovery is currently being hampered by the worldwide financial crisis and cuts in development aid. But the new hotel and business complex remains a glimmer of hope. It's just won a major architectural prize, and that attracts international attention, which the country sorely needs. In that sense, I'm sure that this project is an important piece of the jigsaw puzzle of how to bring progress, not only to this country, but also to the region and the entire continent. Back to the Swiss Alps. The Matterhorn is a mountaineering icon. Every year, more than 3,000 climbers reach its summit. But nature is suffering under global warming. The glaciers are melting more quickly. The research station on Monte Rosa hopes to deliver some insights into climate change. The hut is largely energy self-sufficient. For its water supply, meltwater is collected in a rock cavern. Thermal collectors heat the water. Photovoltaic cells on the facade capture the alpine sunlight and provide electricity and light. Surplus energy is stored in batteries for nights and overcast days. The energy mix can be calculated using the data from the shelter's own weather station. When we see there's a period of bad weather during the week, but the weekend could bring good weather, and we're suddenly expecting lots of people, we know those people will use electricity. Using the two components, number of visitors and weather forecast, we can basically calculate the course of action that's right for the particular situation. At the energy center at Monte Rosa, hut warden Horst Branchen uses software to regulate the ventilation and heating and collect data from the photovoltaic system and rechargeable batteries. If there's a bottleneck, the rapeseed oil-powered heating system takes over. Everything is controlled remotely from the ETH in Zurich. Architecture students at ETH were also involved in the concept for Monte Rosa. The shelter's legendary predecessor, the 100-year-old Monte Rosa hut, could no longer be renovated. A new hut was designed under the direction of Andrea de Plas. Monte Rosa is run from here, but there's a problem. Instead of the expected 6,500 visitors a year, twice that many are coming. The system is overstretched and has to be modified. We have to look at the allocation of energy differently. We need more of it, and above all, we have to be able to store it better. That's the basic problem right now, and it will be rectified with Monte Rosa too. Monte Rosa is entering a new phase. Further research is focusing on optimizing storage capacities. For the time being, additional solar panels have to be installed. Horst Branschen gives guided tours of Monte Rosa. It's the most expensive and complex wooden building in Switzerland. Delegations from Japan and China have already taken a closer look at the spectacular building. Minimalist design in a glacial region. It's evidently quite successful, because since then several projects have come into being that base themselves on Monte Rosa, whether in their building style or in sustainable energy management. In Asia, the megacity of Singapore is a pioneer in environmental awareness. The city-state actively pushes through climate-friendly building projects. If you don't have a 
We visit the Woha Architects headquarters. It was here that Richard Hassel and his team developed the Alila Villas Uluwatu on Bali. The design think tank committed itself to green architecture early on. Nowadays, the Woha founders are snowed under with commissions. Their latest project is the Park Royal in Singapore, a hotel with hanging gardens. In late 2012, it's still under construction. Richard Hassel is there to check progress. In their design, the architects drew inspiration from the rice terraces of Asia. It will feature planted green ledges at lofty heights, green valleys and gullies, what the architects call sky gardens. They actually reduce the surface temperature of the building by a substantial amount. So the green surfaces are actually much less hot. And in a place like Singapore, where the, the general air temperature is very warm, if all the buildings are covered with green, it actually makes the city about three to four degrees cooler. The hotel will have a tropical touch. Hassel is also a landscape architect. He's bringing as many different plant species as possible into the city. So I think what we're seeing is a start of a period where architects see landscape as not just something around their buildings or something that just dresses up a little corner of their building, but something that's really integral to architecture and has to be built into the design from the very beginning. Plants as part of the building's structure. This Woha trademark is revolutionizing architecture worldwide. Two years after its opening, the Woha Resort on Bali has already won several awards. It combines ecological sustainability with cutting edge design. Because Frankie wants to build these ones next. So, the, these, so this is Peter, Peter's villa, age 15. If now so, more villas are to, are to be built. Like Hassel is discussing the plans with the hotel managers. The villas are in tune with traditional Balinese architecture and respect the harmony between God, humans, and nature. The resort collects rainwater. Cascades with retention ponds line the main stairway. The tourism industry has overexploited Bali's water reserves. Here, 80% of the water is recycled. Visitors are meant to see that. I think it's not a case of either or, it doesn't have to be sustainable or enjoyable. Here we're trying to find systems that contribute to the beauty of the resort and that the resort systems are themselves sustainable. Sustainability down to the last detail. All the products in the restaurants and all the building materials come either from Bali or one of the surrounding islands. This limestone comes from the resort's own quarry. Recycled tropical wood is used in the roofs and wall paneling. It's salvaged from old Balinese railway sleepers and telephone poles. The cabanas were also built with it. The entire complex is an environmental policy statement. I think looking into the future is really a problem of, of scarcity of, of materials combined with increasing pressures and uh, maybe in future we can't afford to take some of this land and just give it to a place where people lie by the pool but the, the resort can continue as a functioning part of the, of the landscape. So I think it may be interesting in future to see how resorts are not seen as, as like a separate activity but something much more integrated into a sustainable economy. Mm -hmm.